Welcome to the Nick and Jimmy Show. I'm Nick. This is Jimmy. And today's episode, Nick Drosos. Welcome on the show. What the hell is going on over here? You already replaced me, man? What kind of bull is this? Get off my chair. What are you going to do about it? This is my show. No, it's my show. No, it's my show. No, it's my show. My show. Okay, the problem has been solved. Everything's good. So welcome back on the show. On today's episode, we have Nick Drosos. Hey guys, thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming. Tell us, Nick, who are you? What do you do? What's your story, man? So, well, there's a few things I do. Um, I'm mostly known for my self-defense. I have uh, two YouTube channels, which one of them is Nick Drosos. Uh, I do self-defense and fitness. Code Red Defense as well, that's only self-defense. And now I just opened my third YouTube channel, which is... Uh, third? A third one. Wow. It's with uh, Dr. Andrew Steinberg. That's right, yes. Uh, we have a men's talk show, which is Have the Boss to Talk About It. Um, I also have my... I'm a personal trainer. I have my... My, my gym and my studio where I do one-on-ones. I uh, just landed my brand new website, which is a membership site. And I'm basically working on a, on a lot of little things, but uh, it's all within the, the health and wellness field. And this is primarily like my, you know, the thing that I love doing the most. Great. So three YouTube channels, yeah. right? So how many views total? Uh, about 100 million views and 500,000 subscribers. And that's within how long? How did that happen? The first channel, I opened it seven years ago or eight years ago. I really didn't know anything about YouTube. I just shared my passion, what I love doing, that's teaching self-defense. So I, I picked up my camera one day, I did a seminar and I filmed it. I started just posting videos randomly without knowing anything of you know what was to come through YouTube. Only later on, they monetized it and I started looking at it as a business and seeing the... Mm -hmm. You know, social media actually grew uh, later on. So then I realized, wow, like there's a lot of a lot of ways I can use YouTube to help my business grow. And from there, it, I expanded to many other things through YouTube itself. But half a million subscribers, that's a lot of subscribers, man. Yeah. Like, how did you, did you have to put content every day? How did you Very good question. get to that? Uh, like you guys, right? Consistency is the key, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was posting one video a week, then I went to three videos a week. Uh, you know, you, you know, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna like tell your viewers that I'm gonna post every Saturday a video, well, you gotta post a video every Saturday at the same time. You gotta stick to exactly what you're doing. Even Religiously. Though, yeah, even though things are gonna shift and move like any business, cause it is, you gotta look at it as a business. You just gotta stay consistent with what you do. And even though the algorithms change, you always have to keep up. That's the hard thing, right? Keeping up with, social media keeps changing what they're doing and you always have to follow up as best as you can because they don't send you a, a notice letter and say, by the way, we're changing our algorithm and you can't use the word, you know, but in a video anymore because it's called profanity or balls or whatever it is. So that's the hard part of, you know, of, of always trying to stay up there. But I think the most important thing, if you do something that you love, if you're building a channel, like you guys, what you're doing, you do, you do this because you love it, you enjoy it. It's fun. It's fun, you get to meet people. It's, your motivation is not to make money. Yeah. So that means you're always staying on course. If your motivation is money, and you have a YouTube channel, because people tell me, I wanna open a YouTube channel and make money. I'm like, you won't be making money for at least a year and a half, two years, of being really consistent, unless you get lucky. And if you get one viral video, you might make a little bit of money off it, but it's not what's gonna help you like, you know, mm -hmm. don't go in for the shortcut, go in for the long term in whatever you do. So basically, somebody that wants to start a show or a YouTube channel, okay. they should have an, an existing income already. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Don't, because don't. you then you make desperate decisions and, you know, Absolutely. And it's not fine anymore and you're just doing it for the money, right? So. And when any time, for me, I believe any time we do something out of pressure, out of urgency, mm -hmm. Sometimes we end up rushing stuff. And then you become desperate. You're desperate, and, yeah. you're moving everything way too fast. Instead quit. of taking your time, you either quit, you make bad decisions. So like, I mean, YouTube for me now is nothing more than to share what I love doing as well as my website. So I just, you know, people who watch, go, go to my YouTube channels after go and subscribe to my website, go follow me on other social medias, you know, and I use it as a platform to, to grow into other things, you know? You were saying before, what we were talking before, I asked you about IGTV. Yeah. I said to you, do you think it's maybe able to replace YouTube? No, I don't personally. And trust me, I've looked into it because, you know, they changed their algorithms and they've, 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 they've like really cut me in a lot of big YouTubers. And like I have a management company in LA that manages my YouTube channel. So I, you know, I speak to them and I know what's happening. And, you know, they're 
you know, they've, they've slashed income, they're controlling what people are saying, they've closed YouTube channels or shadow banned them. And, but they're still, you know, I don't think anybody's gonna, for right now, nobody's gonna compete with them. And I don't believe Instagram TV is gonna do that either. But no. that, I'm not an expert, but just from what I'm seeing and what I'm talking to people, I don't think so. No, I was saying that uh, you also give some good advice for people starting shows. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, instead of uh, uh, putting all the traffic on YouTube or, or on Instagram, uh, have a, your own landing page. Yeah, like I, like I, I tell like other people who want to do this, I create a landing page. The because you know, I tell people YouTube, it, it doesn't belong to you. Think of it as you're renting a store from them and you're producing content. At any point, they could shut down your channel. They don't even have to tell you why for whatever reason. And tomorrow they might decide we don't want to pay any of the creators. There's nothing that you could do. So you don't own any of them unless they're in your mailing list or on mm -hmm. your landing page, or you could actually you know, be able to contact them directly. So that's what I'm using for YouTube right now and Instagram as well. And this is the direction I'm moving in, like moving forward. Talk to us about your, your new show. Mm. Yeah, so this, 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 is, this, is my, this is my, and Andrew, Dr. Andrew Steinberg. It's, it's kind of like my baby. It's, um, it's a men's talk show. It's something I've always wanted to do. And one day I was training Andrew and we're like talking and I actually had a client ask me like a, a, a men's question and I said I, I can't answer it to you but I go my clients doctor urologist and I'll ask him you know and then I went to see Andrew I said Andrew you know one of my clients asked me this he gave me advice like shit you know we should like start a show I'm like fuck I've always wanted to do that mm -hmm. like a men's show and he's like yeah and it should be called have the balls to talk about it and I'm like yeah and like three weeks later we were filming the show and I think I think and kind of going to change the subject a little bit, which is all inter, in, interconnected to a certain extent, is that, you know, you meet a lot of people who talk about pursuing something. They want to do the dream. They yeah. have it. They want to make it. They yes, see it. Yes, yes, yes. A month later, three months later, six months later, nothing you're like, happens. nothing happens. Mm -hmm. and I, like, I'm the type and everything I've done in my life, when I have the idea and it's like ready, like, you know, I tell people, go out and do it. Don't wait till you're great or perfect at it. Start doing it and get better as you're doing it. Like even you guys, when you started the show, to today, to in six months, a year, you're gonna be like, wow, look look where we've come. You're all, you're all gonna grow from meeting and talking to different people. You're gonna become better hosts. You're gonna, everything is gonna become better. So now if you would have waited for the perfect moment in time, you guys would still be sitting exactly. on the drawing board trying to build your plan. Exactly. exactly. You know, and I know, cause I've been there, you know, when I was, you know, working at the hospital in, in housekeeping and I, you know, hated my job and I was working seven to three thirty. I was miserable mm -hmm. and I was like I was in this state of like like a zombie going through the motions of life. And I look at where I am today and it's not about you know how much money you're gonna have. I'm, I've seen some of your guests, like they're and it's that's that's to me that's not success. Success mm -hmm. is waking up, doing what you love, being passionate about what you do you know, being able to give back mm -hmm. to the community or to people or like giving some value, you know what I mean? Especially when you're in the eye, the public eyes and influence. Right? Absolutely. People, what, are you, what are you influencing? You know, like if you're just posting pictures of yourself and, you know, in a G string, let's say over and over, what are you giving to people? Yeah. What are you teaching them? What kind of them? content are you giving? Absolutely. And you got out of the, 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 the rat race or the matrix. Yeah. And you were working somewhere else, you hated it, but instead of being like everybody else, like a robot, Following the nine to five? But I was in it for five years, six years. You know what I mean? I, I know the feeling of waking up, you know, on a, on, on, like it's Sunday evening and you're like, shit, I got to go to work tomorrow. Heart attack and, Mondays. And you're exactly. depressed. Yeah. You're depressed. Yes, yes, yes. And, and it's Friday and you're happy. And yeah. I know what it is to wake up every day. I would put, and there's nothing wrong. Like, I mean, what I did, I was working in, in housekeeping. People were telling me, you have a great job, you work at the hospital, you have, you have a retirement plan, all this stuff, that's great, but that's not me. That's not what I wanna do, that's not what I love. That doesn't, you know, I can't go through life doing that, and I did. And it affected my mental health, my physical health, because the more you stay in that state, it's like as if you dim the lights, and you're, after a while, dimming the lights becomes constant. You don't know what it is when it's bright because you're just Comfort there. Zone. Yeah, and you just stay there. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about uh, getting taking action right away. Yeah. And you know sometimes not waiting to have the whole plan and everything. Yeah. So there's a quote. It says, "Ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice." Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Because again, you see people, I meet people and a lot of people ask me and I'm like, okay, I'll help you. I'll, get, I'll tell you what you have to do and come back and bring it to me. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, a week later. So, did you do it? No, guess what? And as a personal trainer, it's the same thing, right? My, my, you know, when I help people lose weight and I have a client, Anne, she lost about 75 pounds. And, you know, she was training on and off with me for like two years. And one day she came to my gym. She's like, I really want, I said, I don't believe you. I don't. I go, it's been two years, you're on and off. I go, you're wasting your time and your money. And to a certain extent, you're wasting mine. Why yeah. should I believe you're going to do it now? And I tell her, I go, you could walk out of this gym right now. You'll come back in a year and you'll be at the same place. Or you can take action right now. And to be honest with you, you have no other option. You have no other choice. You have to do it. But the power is yours. I could only, you know, trigger a few things. I could tweak a few things. I'm there to motivate you. Yeah. But at the end, you got to be the foot soldier. You got to put Absolutely. in the work. And that's what a lot of people are afraid of. People want the short, fast, mm -hmm. and they're not willing to, I call them soldier, go out, get your feet wet, get your hands wet, go out and do it. If you're not 100%. at the end, nobody's going to do it for Absolutely. you. So let's talk about your client and other clients yeah. that lost a lot of weight from your professional experience. Yeah. What's the best secret nugget to lose some weight mm -hmm. or to be in shape the, or the best shape ever? I think it's a combination of many things. And I, I, I believe it starts with, the, for me, as, as a coach, it starts with the mental. If, if, if you could, you know, g g wire a, a, a right attitude and a good mindset, yeah. everything is possible from there. You can't, you, I always, one of my quotes is like, you can't create anything with a shitty attitude. Absolutely. You can't. Like, I mean, if your attitude is shitty, no matter what you 90 do. 90% of success is mindset. Absolutely. And having the right attitude, you fail, you get up, you fail. Trust me, I failed. Absolutely. I, I failed so many times, you can't imagine. I've been down in a ditch so many times, and that's why I'm also so grateful mm. for who I am. I'm so, I wake up every day, and I'm grateful, I'm happy. It doesn't mean I don't have moments where I'm like, bam, like I'm overwhelmed, three YouTube channels, uh, you know, I'm filming for the Montreal Greek Film Festival, I have a full schedule, I'm doing so much stuff, but I'm grateful because everything I do, I do it with passion, it's things that I love to do. Yeah. So like, you know, People tell me, oh, but how do you get everything done? How do I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning because I had to post the video for a men's talk show to do the, the out, to, to write the keywords, you know, post it on social. 5 a.m. How do you do it? I tell people when you're what time you wake up? Seven, eight. I'm up at five to get it done. If you don't, if you're not willing to do that, then take take a regular job, and that could be great if you're happy with that. Yeah. But if you're not, you're gonna have to put some extra time Amazing. and work and effort. Absolutely. So that's the first tip. Mindset, yeah, mindset, have the right attitude. Number two? Um, a combination, obviously, of nutrition and training. Mm. There's no it, doubt. Is it 80-20? See, 70-30. Everybody says it's 80-20. And I agree. And disagree. And I'm, I'm the only one I've heard say this. I think it's 50-50. 50-50. And I'll tell you why. Because the way exercise plays on the mindset Absolutely. and activates, it's equally as important. I take myself as an example. I've been trained in six weeks because I, got, I, I did a seminar in Athens, Greece, and I got injured, my ribs. I haven't trained for six weeks. As soon as I don't train, I start eating a little bit more. I'm not as careful. When I exercise, I also eat well. It's a combination. And you could, you could eat well, but if you don't exercise, you're still not building strength and core. And I just, to me, I put equally the same amount of importance because of the way it plays on the mindset and as way, the way is, is how it, it helps you stay on track. Can we talk a little bit about <clears throat> about uh, your self-defense? Yeah. Why did you get involved in that? Were you bullied when you were younger? Good question. Yeah, yeah. Most, you know, most people I know who've done martial arts, who've you know got into self-defense for the same reasons. Most of them, you know, they bullied, picked on. I was a really small kid, uh, you know. So uh, you know, I started doing kung fu at nine, ten years old, and I was like, okay, I got to learn how to defend myself. Back then, you know, our parents were not you know, helicopter parents like they are today, to a certain extent, which is good. And to a certain extent, we also overprotect our children. And, you know, I had to learn how to defend myself. And, you know, if you had to fight, you had to fight. You got punched in the face, well, too bad. You know what I mean? It was, it was a different times how we handled stuff. And I think today we also exaggerate. We're like, oh my God, my, like it's, you know, bullies existed, exist and will exist forever. Yeah. Obviously there's bullying that, you know, like, 
school needs to get involved. We need to talk mm. to people about it. We need to open up. But we also have to teach our kids how to defend themselves. Okay. And I train a lot of kids. And when you, and this is a great example. Like, I mean, I've trained seven, eight, 10, 12 year olds, and they come in very shy, very scared. And just through teaching them self-defense, it empowers them. You should see how their attitude changes. And one of the Conference. kids I trained, yeah, his father told me, even when he plays soccer, he used to be afraid. Now that kid goes in yeah. there and pushes and he's, and, and that attitude, those seeds you're planting will carry through their life because, you know, your wife, your husband, your coworker, your, 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 your family member, the guy at the bus stop, the guy that you work with could be a bully as well. And how you handled it then could carry through your life if you don't change and empower yourself and understand that, you know, I, I, I can stand up myself. I have the right to and I should stand up for myself and my beliefs and my values. Stand up in what way? Physical or say what you have to say? Obviously. And then take it from there. Absolutely. Like, like when I teach self-defense and people, I, like I always teach first, I teach them about awareness. Second, how to defuse a situation, right? Walk out of the street. What can I do in my everyday life to be safe? Then if I'm confronted or faced with an attacker or potential threat, how do I defuse it? How do I deescalate it? How do I talk my way out of it? And my personal thing. And then third, if you did all that and you feel threatened, then you go preemptive and you hit him first. That's, that's my thing. Or I tell people at the end, it's your life. If you want to wait for this 350 pound guy to pull out a knife and try to stab you before you strike him, that's your choice. But that's what I teach. But obviously first, even with kids, you know, I have like a three step warning where you, you know, you, you warn them, you bring your hands up, you create distance, you warn them again. But it depends on the parents. More and more parents tell me, like, my kid's being bullied and I want him to defend himself. I said, explain to me your rules of engagement to you. Because I know I've told my son, you, if he, he knows if he gets bullied, he's going to be in trouble. However, I've told him, the, the moment somebody lays your hand on you, you defend yourself. It is your right, and I don't care if you get in trouble by the school, this is mine, and maybe some people won't agree, but if somebody touches you and is physically hitting you, you have the right and should defend yourself, and totally we need agree. to teach that to the women, and the girls I train, I train two, like, two teenage girls right now, 12 and 13 years old, and it starts at that age. Yeah. Yeah. But that's another question, like I'm a father of, um, my son is nine, nine months old. Yeah. Obviously it's not the timing. Yeah. At what age is a perfect timing to teach him self-defense? It depends on the child. What I like to do, um, the youngest Three one, years I, old, four or five. No, they don't get it. Their attention Nothing. span is too short. Uh, and I've tried like- Seven, eight. Seven, eight is around. It depends on the maturity of the, the kid, mm -hmm. the child as well. Mm -hmm. So what I tell the parents is bring in, I want to meet him, right? I have a son, so I've trained many, many kids. I've been doing this for like close Who, to 20 years. Um, Hoss, you know Hoss? I actually train his kids. Yeah, he's going to be here tomorrow. Okay, yeah, so I train both his kids, right? They both train it's with next me. Next one. <laughs> <Look> <laughs> try with the beard. <laughs> He's a great guy, right? And you guys know his story as well. I was actually training both his son and his daughter. And you see the difference of when the, the, the confidence builds. Yeah, and again, yeah. that's going to help them later on in life. Absolutely. When they're going to a job interview, mm. when they meet people. Absolutely. The confidence. The confidence is there. That, you know, when you're walking down the street and that energy and that, that aura is felt when you walk in a room. And it, and it doesn't have to be the, I'm so tough and strong. That's the complete opposite like of what you should be when absolutely. you're confident you don't need to like you know stick out your chest and be a tough guy you just need to be neutral absolutely that's all it is do you have some days i just want to quit you're like uh yeah like man what am i doing like even right now there, there's moments uh was it uh I, like i was in when i was in greece i was there for 10 days i taught two seminars and an instructor course and it, it, it was a huge success i couldn't even believe there was that many people and my aunt was watching me she goes like you're on vacation, relax. I'm like, yeah, I don't have time to relax. I'm here like, you know, and then I was, I was in Santorini. I'm in a beautiful five-star hotel. I'm on my laptop at 10 o'clock at night and I'm working. And the guy looks at me, the owner, uh, Pano, and he's like, uh, he's like, 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 what are you doing? You know, and he recognizes me from YouTube and we're like talking, he goes, he goes, you're on vacation, stop. I'm like, but, uh, but I'm enjoying it. I like it, this is what I do. So I, I was like in a high and then I came back home and I was like, and I'm still in this machine. And then, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, you know, fuck when shit doesn't, you know, you're like, you put all this effort and time and work and work. And sometimes you're like, screw it. I'm gonna get rid of everything. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna buy a boat. I'm gonna go to Greece. I'm gonna wear my hat and become a sailor. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But and then you always go back and you're like, Nick, 
I talk to myself, Nick, yeah. shut up, be grateful for what you have. You're having fun, you're helping people, you're making a difference, you love what you do. Think about where you used to be and where you are today. That's all you have to do yeah, for man. me. And then I just go back and again, everything I do, I love. I say the day I stop, the day I hate making YouTube videos, the day I hate doing a men's talk show, the, hate, the day I hate doing that, I'm just gonna stop it. That's it. So basically Cut. follow your passion. Absolutely. And the results will come. Always, yeah. Resilience and consistency. Two things that you need. Good. And uh, tell us uh, your story about the, the hat. hat. I you bought, always wear it. Yeah, I always, it's my signature hat. It's funny because people recognize it because of it. Um, it was about, uh, what was it maybe, I bought this hat about 15 years ago. And um, I went to Greece and I bought it and then I, I had put it on a shelf and about five years ago, again, I went through a, a pretty significant moment in my life and I saw the hat and it was like in the shelf and then I picked it up and I said, and I took off the hat and I wore it and I looked in the mirror, I'm like, I'm going to live like a sailor. Like, I know it sounds silly, but to me, it's like living like a sailor, living in the present moment, free, being grateful being an urban sailor, like, uh, you know, there's a storm. Life is, you know, life is a roller coaster. You have storms. A sailor with briefs or without? <laughs> I like that. With briefs. And I always say, you know, like, I mean, I, the, the hat reminds me to live in the moment, be grateful that when there's a storm, I say, Nick, put on your hat, go through it. Storm. There's going to be a light at the end. That's what life is, right? There's, there's ups and downs. There's, Absolutely. you know, days that are better than others. But overall, you wanna you wanna try to create, and I believe that we are the we are completely, completely the creators of our own destiny and our own life. Totally agree. We are like, the Picassos of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. We I believe in law of attraction, visualization. I meditate on stuff. I don't believe things just happen to us. We attract what happens yeah. to us, and we decide. What's yeah. going to come in? Totally agree. And it all starts with us. You have a shitty attitude, guess what? Shit stuff is going to happen. You have a good attitude, you attract good people. Good things happen to you. It's all part of that. It's like, what's your playing board? The game mm -hmm. that you're playing mm -hmm. on, what does it look like? Who are you attracting in your life? Who are you bringing in? That, I tell people. I did a podcast for, um, for Words of Success, and he asked me, what's, you know, what's one of the most important advice you can give me as a 20-year-old? I said, look at your friends. Who are you hanging around with? What are the influence that they're bringing you? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they toxic? Yeah. What are you giving to each other as a fair exchange? What is each other's benefit? Yeah, you know, and as I get older, I'm like, toxic, toxic. I just cut, you know, and, and when you get rid of the toxins around your life, then everything starts to become clear. Even, I tell you, even what you watch on TV, your brain absorbs that. Yeah. One of my clients, um, very, very wealthy family. And um, I was talking to her and I said, I, I, I've always been curious about this question about money and success. Does money bring success? And I said, I said, how does it feel to have so much? And I, I, it's been five years I trained them. So I'm like, I'm like family, I'm in their home, I know them. How does it feel to have so much money and be able to do whatever you want? And she said, Nick, it would mean nothing without the love and the support of my husband and my children. Absolutely. And that's when I realized that the happy, the happiest people that I've met had nothing to do with how much money they had, mm. but it was the quality of their relationships Core values. that they have with other people, your wife, your kids, your social life. That to me is, you know, who's around your, your table? What are you talking about? What are you, what are you attracting? That to me is the base of happiness mm. of all. 100 percent yeah absolutely well man you should be proud of yourself congratulations for your success and everything thank you guys thank you for having Doing me well and we're excited to also be a guest on your show yes for sure absolutely. guys we'll have the balls to talk about it we're going to be having a live event as well so hope to see you guys there absolutely. too we're going to be doing a men's health for 2019 we're going to have six speakers so that's going to be uh, amazing that's going to be something great so for everybody watching this video right now yeah. that wants to get involved in YouTube, yeah. social media, yeah. whatever the case is. Yeah. What's your advice to them? Um, well, I get that question. I always say, pick first, whatever you're gonna do, don't pick what's trending, pick what you're good at, mm. right? If you're a hairdresser 
and you love hairdressing and you're passionate about, start a YouTube channel and teach people how to be a hairdresser. Mm. Find a way also to make a little spin, make it your own. Yeah. Don't do it for money. Don't wait till you're amazing at it. Just start doing it. And as you do it, you'll get better at it. Absolutely. Be consistent. Mm -hmm. And don't go in for the shortcut, go in for the long run. Yeah, great. And actually, you could see that, you know, how we started the show. Yeah. How we went from, you know, a small little situation with a conference that we used to have before to yeah. like the way we've evolved. So we didn't wait to take action. We took yeah. action with what we had and made it happen. Well, you see that. So I'm looking at now, I'm seeing what you guys are doing. Yeah. I, I see you guys with the guests and your show. I see like, wow, you guys are. And again, you're going to look back in six months or a year. Exactly. And what normally happens, you're like, shit, look what we're doing. We could have done it so much better. Because yeah. every time we look back, I do the same thing. I'm like, oh man, I can't believe I made that video. I was like, Psh. and and, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, and that's mm -hmm. part of growth and evolution as well. So it's part, it's part of the process. Thank you very much. If somebody wants to follow you on social media and uh, get in contact with you. Best thing is to go visit my website, nickjosos.com. So I have a, a fitness, self-defense, motivational, like a coaching program there, as well that, you know, on the website are my YouTube, my Instagram, my Snapchat, and all my social media. Also HomeFit, Nick HomeFit. Yeah, that's my, my more of my local business where I do like my personal training, which is nickhomefit.com. That's from Montreal. That's from Montreal, yeah. Okay, cool. So once again, Nick, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you. Once man. again, you should be proud of yourself, man. Keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you're an inspiration to many. Wow, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, if you like this content and want more content, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, The Nick and Jimmy Show, and Nick Drosos, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. See you soon.